Good morning all. Today I thought I'd take apart this uh, lamp which I actually bought in Tenerife at a sort of souvenir shop. Um, it's got, oh what is it, 5x4, 20 warm white LEDs there uh, which produce a nice yellowy colour and then it's got three of the more bluey uh, cool white LEDs on the end and the button simply cycles through the 20 LED panel and the three LED end and then switches off and that's pretty much it. Um, I think there are three triple A's in there. Let's take a quick look at that. I can get that thing open and then it looks like you have to press that in. Yeah, so uh, yeah, three Hua Hong triple A batteries in there. So let's take uh, these out. I remember the guy in the shop uh, actually put these in for me. They weren't already in this thing, but they've been in it ever since. I wonder if these are alkalines or those nasty zinc carbon batteries. Made in China, obviously. Uh, super heavy duty normally means not alkaline and the rubbish. Zinc carbon, is it? Or that type of battery? Uh, all right, so let's undo these four screws and see what delights lie inside this thing. Um, I'm guessing some sort of controller because how else would you implement the three uh, state switch without a microcontroller? So I'm guessing. A microcontroller. Um, I always find three cells a little bit of a cop out, really. I mean, it's a reasonably uh, quick way of getting five volts or thereabouts, four and a half volts. Um, but uh, yeah, I generally don't like things that use three cells. It's just, ah. Don't know why I don't like it. I just don't. Okay, something's fallen out. What is it? Oh, it's the push button switch. Ah, okay. So we appear to have a push button switch, uh, a chip, which I'm guessing is a microcontroller, LEDs on a PCB, and then a separate uh, module at the end. Okay, let's take a closer look at the circuit board. Right, lots of LEDs in parallel. Who says you can't put LEDs in parallel? So these three uh, bluey white ones, the cool white ones, are all in parallel and uh, connected to those two wires. Uh, so that line that runs around the outside there, with that resistor there, that's uh, to power this set of three LEDs. Uh, these LEDs all appear to be in parallel. They're certainly just uh, laid across these sort of bus bars. So I assume they're all in parallel and that uh, they're being driven from a low voltage, all 20 of them being in parallel. Um, let's take a close look at that little chip. So the little 8-pin chip is a ZP001, mm, is that? Or a ZPG01? I'll have to have a closer look at that myself. Um, one of the transistors is a Y2, and the other one is, mm, what's that? Is that a 2TY? I can't quite see it at the moment. I'll have to have a closer look. So the microcontroller, the 8-pin microcontroller, ZP001, I can't find any information on that. Uh, it's going to be just a uh, number that um, has been put on probably by the um, suppliers of the chip, but in order to mask its true identity. Now you can see that VCC, that's the positive terminal of the battery, goes through a, a low value resistor to pin five and ground comes around here to pin uh, seven. So if you can work out what microcontroller that is from the fact that VCC is five and ground is seven, uh, that's possibly one way to identify that. Uh, the two transistors are Y2 and 2TY. Well, they're both the same, it seems. They're both 8550 PNP transistors. Um, the only difference in the circuit, I'll get back in close in a moment, seems to be the base resistors. Uh, there's a lower value base resistor to put more current into the base of the transistor driving the 20 LEDs. There's a higher value, uh, it's 1K I think, for the transistor that's just driving the three 
uh, five millimeter LEDs. These ones here, uh, those are the 20, those are the three. So yeah, they're just putting more current into the transistor that's driving the, uh, the more LEDs. So the 8550 PMP transistor has pinouts like this collector um, on the top, base to the left, emitter to the right. So certainly these two resistors here, which go from the two bases round to microcontroller outputs are the base resistors. Um, now current limiting uh, doesn't seem to be provided by resistors running up to the LEDs because these are marked 000. So it looks to me like current limiting actually is mostly internal resistance in the batteries, uh, which are here, uh, because the current flowing into the base of these transistors, uh, one of these is a 1K and one, this one is 471, so that's 470 ohms. This one is 102, so that's 1K. Well, we've got about four and a half volts on the batteries, minus about half a volt on the uh, base emitter junction of these two transistors. So we've got four volts in 1K, that's four milliamps. That's quite a lot of base current. It's certainly going to result in really unlimited amounts of collector current. Uh, so yeah, it would appear that current limiting in this circuit is mostly reliant on the internal resistance of the batteries. So the circuit for each of these two uh, LED circuits is like this. We've got a PNP uh, transistor. The emitter is going directly to VCC, uh, 4.5 volts. The base does have a resistor. Um, it's different in the one circuit to the other circuit. Um, and collector goes to the diodes, which are gonna be pointing uh, downwards. So like this and down to ground. And then the diodes are simply paralleled. Uh, there are three diodes in one of the circuits and the other circuit has 20 light emitting diodes. So they're just paralleled like that. So if you put a low on this point here, a current will flow from emitter through base uh, down to ground and that will allow a larger current to flow from emitter to collector and through all of the LEDs. So slightly odd that they've uh, not put any current limiting resistance in the path of the LEDs. They've gone for these zero ohm resistors. But what they have done is put uh, a 100 ohm resistor there between VCC. This is the most positive battery terminal and uh, pin five of this IC. So I don't quite know why they felt the need to limit current going to the integrated circuit uh, through a 100 ohm resistor. Um, but not put any current limiting in the LED circuit. It does seem a little bit back to front. But uh, yeah, not a bad utility light. Um, I do like the warm white LEDs uh, on the flat surface here. Not so keen on the uh, rather old fashioned cool white five millimeter LEDs up on the end of the unit there. Uh, additional utility uh, for this light being provided by this quite uh, flexible hook here and the obligatory uh, neodymium magnet in the base there so it can be hung or stuck or attached in a multitude of ways. But uh, yeah, this one breaks the rules a bit by having uh, LEDs all in parallel, although of course these days that's pretty common practice and it can be seen that it really doesn't uh, have any adverse effects uh, and no current limiting in the LED circuits. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, rules are there to be broken, aren't they? Right, let's put the little blue switch back in there. And then that has to go back in like so. Oh, that top surface lens thing just fell out, but I think I've caught it and uh, now to put the screws back in and a uh, usual thing with these screws if they appear to be a bit tight and binding up it's worth just clicking them back one click and then you might find that the uh, the threads align properly and that's going in without any resistance um yeah so not a bad utility light um with warm white or 
cool white output options. Uh, I can't remember how much it costs, probably three or four euros or something like that. But uh, yeah, nice to see how it works internally. Cheerio.